Adriano D'Souza and Nat Young returned to their homes after the second stop of the ASP World Tour, the prestigious Rip Curl Bells Beach event. For D'Souza, it was a massive victory as he clinched his fourth World Tour event title and as Victor got to ring the famous bell. Adriano D'Souza wins the Rip Curl Pro. Amazing wow. moment for the kid from Brazil. In a contest, I want to win, no matter what. For Young, it was a sensational result for the tour rookie, as he'd overcome some of the world's best surfers to reach the final against D'Souza. To be there and get second was a huge accomplishment for me. There would be little downtime, though, as both surfers had commitments to keep, family to see, and preparations to make for the next event in Rio. Young would be in Santa Cruz, where he grew up surfing the fame breaks around Steamer Lane. A few weeks at home to keep focused and stay ready. D'Souza would be home in Brazil in the media spotlight, but only briefly, before taking off for Indonesia to surf perfect waves in paradise. As the surfers continue the year on tour, it won't be long before all eyes turn to the third event of the year, the Billabong Rio Pro. It's only four days since Brazilian Adriano D'Souza lifted the much coveted and highly prestigious Rip Curl Bells Beach Trophy. He's back in Brazil combining media commitments with a chance to see his family. So happy, you know, to back back home and see my, my beautiful city. We're gonna do some photo shoot for the newspaper of Brazil. It's been crazy. I arrived here from Bells on Wednesday and Saturday, today, I'm going back to Indonesia, so I'm still on the jag lag, and, but on the same time I have to recover fast. D'Souza's been in the media spotlight since he stepped off the plane from Australia. In fact, his brief trip home was only planned at the last minute after his win at Bells. The trip is bittersweet, however, leaving him little time to see friends and family. One thing I really miss it is my family and, and spending like a day at home. It's hard, but my my goal, it's, uh, it's most important right now, you know. Number one, it is surfing, so I have to put everything there. They say you gotta win it to ring it, and the 26-year-old Brazilian certainly rose to the challenge to secure his fourth World Tour event title. The victory takes him to fourth place in the World Tour rankings. Amazing wow. moment for the kid from Brazil, overcoming so much throughout his career, and now he's back in the World Title race. It was really emotion, and uh, that Kind of that second was realized everything become true. But it's been a long, hard road to get here, and one that started out from humble beginnings. For D'Souza, life began in a favela in Garuja, Sao Paulo. Today, he's making a visit back to his old neighborhood to see friends. It's getting better, and I'm improving a lot here. It used to be way worse than this. It's a big contract, but um, for me it's such an inspiration, you know, to back here to see my good friends. During his visit, D'Souza visits the family home which he grew up in. Still completely the same, nothing's changed. And just the, the, the colors of the paint just kind of move a little bit. Kind of old version right now, but still, I can remember it's still the same. My parents using this space here to uh, to sell it some um, drinks, and uh, this is the the bar. This is the place we live, bathroom. So uh, completely the same that I left. Um, I sleep just right here in the corner. Here and my brother there. Here was my, my mom and my dad. That's the, the space, they got it. I'm kind of really happy to born here in this place because um, I really give a value everything I have right now. So uh, if you're not living here before, for sure there's nothing um, I can enjoy everything I have today. Santa Cruz, California, 
a town where the very fabric of surfing pulsates through everyday life. This is a place where pros and townsfolk alike share the famed surf breaks like Steamer Lane and Pleasure Point. It's home for the 21-year-old World Tour rookie, Nat Young. Young is back home after a sensational result at the Rip Curl Bells Beach Contest. He plays second. After a long trip, it's always nice to come home and, um, you know, just have some downtime and chill out. And, uh, you know, I'm actually home by myself. My mom's, my mom's still on vacation. So I got the, the whole place to myself. I've just been hanging out with my friends and stuff. I'm definitely hungry for more after the first couple of events. But I also feel like that if you work hard and you deserve to, you know, give yourself a pat on the back and, and uh, you know, enjoy it a little bit and then refocus and, you know, gear up for the next event. I've been surfing pretty much right point breaks the whole time I was in Australia. I'm gonna try to get back in the swing of surfing a couple little beach breaks. Maybe it's similar to Brazil. I've never really been to this spot, but. Is it a, is it a left or a right, the Brazil? Well, it's just a, I think it's just a peaky beach break. Since his success at Bells, Young's received a hero's welcome in his hometown, a place with a rich surfing heritage. Watching the Bells contest from home was so sick, though. Like, the whole town was rooting for you, bud. It's like watching a 49er game or something. There's been a lot of people congratulating me that I don't know, but, you know, they live here and, you know, a lot of people here surf, so, you know, I think it's a bonus because when I do good, people at home are stoked. We haven't had a guy surfing on the WCT for like 15 years, so to be able to be that guy and, and you know, representing a pretty big surf town is awesome. How is it? Left. There? There are a couple of rides too? Yeah. Should we just do it? When I'm not doing contests and I know I'm dedicating all my time to training and surfing a lot, all that dedication and all that hard work, I feel like helps mentally. Knowing that I'm giving it 101% and you know if I win then that's what I was working for and, and you know if you don't win then you just know you gave it everything you got. D'Souza is visiting his old neighborhood among the dusty streets of Garuja in Sao Paulo. In Brazil, soccer is the number one sport. And if you're a kid from the favela, soccer is a possible escape route, a chance for poor kids to try and build a better life through their sporting talent. On this street here, I was, I was playing when I was young, like this kid already, you know? It's such a good memories, such a good time. Oh. I think the Sims you come from the favela, you put everything, you know, no matter what, you just put your heart in that thing. This kid, hopefully some days become a, a pro soccer player. I saw a lot of example from the soccer guys. I said, yes, I can, I can do this on surfing as well. You know, I can be a star, but um, before that, I have to put in really hard work. Getting out of the favela was one motivation but it was a hard work ethic encouraged in him by his brother Angelo, a soldier in the army that had the biggest impact on the young D'Souza. As D'Souza made his way up the pro surfing career ladder, so came the rewards of success, contest winnings and endorsement deals. When I became a prof professional surfer, I just took my whole family from this place and moved to, to the better place. On the eve of his departure for a surf trip to Indonesia, D'Souza's visiting his brother Angelo and the rest of the family at the small row of houses he's had built for them. He really believed, you know, uh, in my skills. Yes, you can do, you can do. He always showed me the way uh, they have to work. He's from the army, and uh, that uh, was really inspiring me. I'm very happy for this result, and I hope there will be many others. They say, uh, he said, um, he's very honored to see me doing really well, but um, he's kind of happy, you know, to see me girls and going, have a single activity, every single step. But uh, they have to keep him working because it's not stopped yet. So that's it. <laughs> Nat Young has immersed himself in sport his whole life, but his destiny as a professional athlete would be in surfing. With Steamer Lane at the end of your street, how could it be any other way? 
you know, it was an awesome place to grow up. There's a lot of really talented surfers, so it was good for me because I got to see really good guys surfing and learn from that. After winning national youth championships and progressing as a junior, he rocked the surfing world by winning the O'Neill Coldwater Classic in 2008. He was only 17. Three years later, he qualified for the Elite World Championship Tour and came into the start of the 2013 campaign slightly under the radar. He began his rookie year on the ASP World Tour with a very respectful 13th place at the first contest. But it was at the second event where he really turned heads, coming so close to victory. Even though it is second place, I feel like it's still probably the highlight of my career so far. Nat Young will be fifth, tied with Joel Parkinson. So what's Nat Young taking away from this result? Adriano is, you know, one of the toughest competitors there is. He's really competitive just like myself. So um, for me, that contest was just about not giving up. The countdown's here. There's a little wave, and it's official. Yeah. Wow, that was a huge win. I'm really happy for Nat. Um, you know, I mean, he's been working hard. And it was his, it's been his dream his whole life to be on this tour. To make all, all those heats was amazing for me, and you know I learned something in that contest that you know if you get the opportunity, stay focused and you can do it. It's early days, but with two events completed, Young puts himself in pole position for Rookie of the Year. Going on as a rookie with some sort of expectations, you're just going out there and, and surfing and not trying to out-surf yourself, just doing what you can do. D'Souza's at the end of his brief trip back home. Precious moments spent with his family have come and gone too quickly. Yeah, my relationship is still kind of good with my family. They all supported me no matter what will happen with me. But uh, they know I'm trying to search my dream. Right now I'm packing to Indonesia. To be really honest, it's not easy to travel every time. Uh, from now, I'm leaving today from my home, so another three or four months out. He's heading to Macaroni Surf Camp, where he'll be joined by some of Brazil's best young surfing talent. Together, they'll be practicing for the next event in Rio. All these young kids, they're gonna push me a lot, you know. I was giving me a lot of inspiration, so for sure they're gonna push me to the next level. Nat Young's strategy is based around solid preparation, and part of that preparation is a consistent training schedule with specific conditioning objectives. Unfortunately, when I'm on the road, I don't do stuff like that, so getting back and getting back into it is always kind of tough. To stay on top of this when he's at home, he trains with fitness coach Joey Wolf. Wolf is an ex-pro baseball player who's worked with Young for five years. Training Nat is very challenging because of his schedule. When he's here, I'm constantly changing his rep schemes, set schemes, so when he is getting ready for his contest, he's at the peak of his performance. Being strong, but also being flexible is huge in surfing. So working on both those aspects. Load and rotate. I want you to try to knock me over. You're going to throw it to me, OK? That boy, fire from the hip. Good. Let's do 12, six on each side. Okay. Yep. Nice job. All right, Turkish, get up. Let's just do like three on each side. For me, I only have two more weeks with him before he leaves to go to Brazil. So it's important for me to make sure the intensity is up, but nothing too intense or I'm going to kill him. Nice job. Good. Ten of these again, yep. You know, I'm there to work out and, you know, I might be wanting to quit, but, you know, he pushes me and, and that's what I want. All right, you ready? Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, halfway. Nat sees the benefit of his training. So whether the waves are pumping or not, he's still getting to the gym. Oh boy, don't stop, keep going. Five, four, three, two, and time, nice job. We're gonna hop on this Versa climber real quick. All right, Nat, when you're ready, dude. 30 seconds, oh boy. Get stronger, come on, get stronger, keep going. Five, four, three, two, nice job, good work, way to go. His desire to, to win a world title is, is apparent when he comes in the gym, every, every single time. Um, so for me, that makes my job easy. Most, most of the time when I work with my clients, it's how do I motivate this person? 
For him, that's not the case. I'll do one more of those. One more? All right. All the way through. All the way through. Keep going. Nice job. Oh boy. <laughs> nice job, dude. He gives 100% every time. That's why I love working with him. The last part, obviously, is, is tough, but he, he never quits. He never stops, and that's why he's as good as he is at what he does. So tomorrow, 12? Yeah, is that right? That's yeah. Right. Awesome job, dude. Good work. As the countdown period to the Billabong Rio Pro commences, after recent glories, both surfers reflect on what has gone before. But as the surfing world turns its attention to the next event, the surfers focus on what it's going to take to reach new heights. D'Souza has silenced some critics and in doing so has blazed a trail for the next generation of Brazilian surfers. The very surfers who look up to him now challenge and push him. For Young, as a rookie on tour, he has much to prove. Can he sustain the high levels he set himself or will new pressures on him take their toll? Their paths may have recently met, but their immediate destiny is uncertain. But there is a constant, hard work, focus, and a will to win. Next time on 21 Days, Working day by day, dealing with the ocean, and um, believing in yourself. What makes a good sportsman is someone that wants to win, being competitive and giving it all you got.